Hello there, person. Well, man, did you miss me again? I bet you missed me. I bet you were thinking, you know what? I just miss Wizard Foo right now. I wish his, he was streaming right now. Oh, he's streaming right now. Let's go watch him. Probably exactly what went through your mind, huh? But anyways, check it out. We got um more, more issues to deal with with multiplayer. This is kind of... Quite the technical challenge, I'll tell you that. Um, this is the second game I've second time I've written a multiplayer game, and um, I just remember how many tiny little issues there are, which added all up can seem like tedium, but uh, it's the same thing with making any kind of video game. Um, you got so many bugs at the end of a video game. This is kind of where we're at right now, just like dealing with constant little desyncs and issues with the server. Today, we're dealing with an issue with the server, so let's get this all wizard up. Hey, Tombscar. Yeah, whoa, dang, you used to watch those old streams? Hey, I'm working on this game now. It's called Wraithbinder. It's also in the Songbringer universe, and this one's multiplayer. It's got online co-op, and that's what I'm working on right now. The issue right now is where I create a game with one player, and then I create another game with another player, and somehow the server gets confused and thinks the one player is part of the other player's match, but they're not. Let's see if we can deal with this. Uh, wait, wait, wait. The stream's dead? It seems fine. We're green. It was dead. Huh. I have zero drop frames whatsoever. Zero. Absolutely. 0.0% 0 .0 drop frames. I think it might have been on, on that end. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it's fine. Uh, God. It's bringing back nightmares. The last three streams have all died in the middle of it. Like, completely dead. I had to restart my modem. And now I got a brand new modem from my ISP. So hopefully... Hopefully it's good. Okay, so I'm trying to do this where I close one client and there. Okay, good. We didn't... No, Dabo, it happened again. Okay, well, that's kind of good. I mean, we're trying to deal with this issue. We just had that issue happen. So I'm trying to remember what happened. I did, a, I did a new co-op match with one player. I did a solo match with the other player. And then I started the co-op match. And then I got these clients both running for a second. And then I left the other player. So both of these players were in separate matches, right? They should not have... that. When I left that one player, it should not have made the other player teleport out. So something is up with that. Let's try and figure this out. Now that we have that happened again, that's really, really good. So I'm going to grab down the latest server log file. And let's see what we can find here in the server log. Okay, here's what we have all from right now now we just restarted the server a little bit ago and okay so we had one player uh, we don't really need that log statement anymore but we created created a match with uh, with a co-op match first okay so player two created a co-op match and then we created another match also co-op that's not right with player one oh no we created a co-op match with player one and then we erased play erased um we erased that co-op match right here and then we created a new solo match with player one and that's what caused it so it might have been that player one was all already part of a co-op match and then we removed them huh oh dang yeah the first version of songbringer yeah that was a while ago huh so interesting why would it have sent a leave reply to two and one no wait no it sent a leave reply to just one when two left their match so we're erasing two clients and then this is weird we have an empty match there's no players left and the server still sent a leave reply okay we need to make a, actually a copy of this log just in case i accidentally overwrite this because this is this is gold like finding this whole situation having this happen exactly right okay so to, so my goal right now is to fix this issue with the server where for some reason the server gets confused and thinks that player player one was part of two's co-op match. Player one was not. So we can clearly see right here though that we were start we start to erase two from all matches, and we get down to the point where the match is completely empty. But then it still sends a leave reply. Okay, actually, I think the easiest way to solve this is going to be to make this happen locally. So hopefully we can actually make this happen. So we need to um, perform the exact same process, but with a local server running. So let's get the ser the server running locally and we're going to basically fire up the server in xcode 
running locally on my computer and we're gonna get two clients loaded and we're gonna try and do the exact same process, but this time we're gonna have a breakpoint when we start to erase a client. So that's in servers, erasing client. I think it's in client. No, no, it's on, on disconnect. Yeah, I'll start there on disconnect. So for on disconnect in the server and here I'm setting a breakpoint there. Okay, good. So now we got a breakpoint there and we've got the server running. So now we just need to run the two clients and try and do the exact same thing. Yeah, Tim Scar, it does that already. This is different. This is when, um, this is when a client intentionally disconnects, but the server's getting confused about what match they're part of. So what the server is supposed to do is if there's say two players in a match, and one of them leaves, the server is supposed to send a leave message to the player that's still remaining in the match to let them know, hey, this other player left. So the other player can respond and say, okay, uh, great. Now that, that player is gone, let me teleport them out of my screen and do anything I needed to do, clean up. So that's what's going wrong is that the server is still sending a leave reply, even though there's no players left in the match. It's super weird. Okay, so we created, let me just make sure I'm doing this right. We created co-op match with player two. Okay, that's this guy. Okay, now we created a match for, we created another co-op match with player one. Okay, and then player one gets uh, out of their co-op match. So cancel that. And then player one creates a solo match. And then player two, after a while, I think this is after a while, like, right, 49, three seconds later, two is ready. And then a few more seconds right later, two leaves their co-op match. Okay, so, damn, damn it. It's automatically pausing because that guy's in a solo match. Ah, oh, that's, that messed it all up. Okay, I have to do all of that without, um, oh, that was actually supposed to be something else anyways. All right, damn it. Start all that over. Okay, this time I just have to do it from memory. Two creates a co-op match. One creates a, a co-op match. One leaves their co-op match. No, and then one creates a solo solo match. And then two leaves. Two leaves their leaves completely by closing the closing the entire game. Ten minutes remain. Okay, so first we go two, then we go one, and then two. No, one cancels. One creates a solo match. And then two exits or cancels. I can't remember. Can't exits. Yeah. Okay, good. Two has now canceled. Now we're in the server and tell you, let's see what happens. Okay. So hopefully we can catch this whole issue. Catch this tiger by the tail, swing it around a bit like Bowser. Um, okay. Let's try and just step through the code and figure out what's going on. So we got our client, client summary string parsing error. Let's figure that out. That's what that client summary string connection name. This is username now and connection can be the second variable here. All right. We can put that into our LLDB, have a better type summary for that. There we go. Now we got a type summary for our client to be the string two with their connection as a hexadecimal number. Now we've got our match we loaded up. Match ID one. Two left their co-op match that they had not started yet. That's match ID one. What are my other, other matches? We've got a tweet. That's a vector. Very nice. Okay. We've got a, two matches. One is the co-op match player two. And ID match two is the match with player one. And this one's solo and that one's co-op. Okay, everything's fine to start with. Now we're looking at the player's identity, username, player index. Okay, this is pretty important, this client erase function. We're going to step into erase client. We're creating a, a little connection to search for. We do match find. Oh, dang, I should have stepped into that method. Okay, we've we've tried to remove the connection 580 from the matches. So let's see what happened to those matches. Client still has client one this has no clients for match co-op good that worked it removed player two from the co-op match correctly that's what it was supposed to do good job match ids is a map of int bools where it can see if it's been used that's right and match lookup is an unsigned in oh because it's a connection to oh match lookup was based on connection type that's right and that's IDs, IDs. All right, so we're just removing the match ID. Five minutes remain. So really there should be an assert be false right here if the match ID is not found. Okay, so we, we do find the match ID, we erase, that's good. So we've erased our match ID, but we have not erased the actual match yet. That doesn't seem right. Hold on, so we've got, now we've still got, oh, it did work. Oh, I is the match. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is erasing the match ID, this is erasing the match. Okay, I need to make that co code a little bit clearer, but I I can't do it while I'm debugging here. Okay, so we have one. We've erased that match. Maybe that's 
maybe we still have a, see what happens here. We erase the client that's successful. It finds the client. We erase from the client's list. So our client is these two, uh, these are, this is a map. We can't back to that Okay, so We still have our match pointer. Oh, that's what's wrong. Oh, okay. I see exactly what's up here. <laughs> our match ID, our match has even gone wrong because it, now it thinks it's same. It's this other match that we're dealing with and sending, sending leave replies to the wrong player right here. Okay. Uh, I see what to do. Okay. Let's get this all coded up correctly. All right. Great. I'm super glad we found that um, that issue. That's really awesome. So get this all right. This one right here, we need to make sure that we assert, this is a uh, erase the match ID. Who minutes are made. And this is erasing the actual match. We're iterating over at this point. So we know that it's good. We know that our, our iterator to it is fine. So let's get that like this and let's make sure we have a good log statement in case we don't find a match to erase. So, so we got an assert failure. In case we are running a local server, we can actually just be easily assert fail. And then for our, our online server that's running in release mode, we've got it. So we at least log a statement out if we don't ever find an, a match ID to a race, because that we should be finding that. That would be a, considered an error if this actually happened. Okay, let's get on to the other things that are important to deal with here, which is in the on disconnect function problem. The real problem of all of this is basically that the match is being found at first, and then it gets erased here in client erase. And then we, we use the same variable again to try and reference the match later which is wrong at this point. So we need to do just an int player index equals like negative one. And then we do inside a block of code, we can just privately get the match and say, if match player index equals match get client index. And then we need to look up the match again once we've, once we've erased the client. So we properly have the actual, the correct match to be erasing from. And then we've got another thing where, it's one thing I noticed way earlier was that we, it logs this thing to the server log couldn't find match to erase for our connection blah and that happens um that happens when we are actually creating a match join that they originally so we kind of need to in the client erase function no match erase function we need to say whether it's kind of like say whether it's verbose or not i think this is the function we use yeah so this would be false so we need a race client to say like a uh, bool verbose and we do false when we remove them from an existing match and then we do uh true if we if we're actually disconnecting so basically we, one we have one type of erase client where it's um it needs to log to the server if it has any kind of error whatsoever and then we have another type of erase client where it doesn't really care if uh it couldn't find the client to erase because it shouldn't find the client to erase okay so next thing we got to make sure that we call all erase client from a client erase with true for verbose. Okay. I think that should solve all of our issues in the whole world forever. Okay. Let's rebuild this online server. Uh, um, and, uh, while we're, while the server's rebuilding, we can review the code that we've already written. So just to, like, make sure this is all bueno. Okay. So we've made the match find method called find by ID, just to distinguish it from the match find with the cons connection, because because cons connection can um, typecast to an unsigned integer automatically. So that gets really confusing. So this is a distinct, just a little distinction, which sa saves us from causing any errors, which actually, these are runtime errors. These are the worst kind of errors, They're not compilation errors, which you can easily identify. They're runtime errors where you're like, what's going on? Okay, so then when this is the main, the main gist of what's solving our problem with the server and the clients, the matches and all that, this, the basically we had this match pointer or a reference, which is essentially a pointer um, to a match. And then you, we erase the client from the match, which erased that match pointer. And then we were still referencing and using that same match pointer, which was invalid at that point. So I can't even believe this worked in the past. Oh my gosh. Hey, what's up, Sushi Gamers? Welcome. Okay, so now instead of doing that, we basically said we get the player index from the match in its own block. So we can get the match once, erase the client from the matches, which could erase that match, and then get the match again later because, oh no, that's not going to work. Because our connection has been erased from that match, we're never going to find any match at this point. Oh, okay. So we need to we need to hold on to that match pointer. Like we were doing it the right way, but we need to know if that client erase is erasing the match. Oh, okay, so how are we going to do that? Client erase. There's only one call to client erase. So this is easy enough. We can make client erase 
um, split it up into two into two bits and then erase client. We need to know if we've erased that match. Okay, so we're gonna have this erase client function return a boolean now, which basically um is going to indicate that the match has been erased. Ah, it's not very clear though. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like doing it that way. Let's do it a different way. The instead of passing this verbose message, we could pass a match pointer ref. So we're patching, passing a match pointer ref to a match. And if um, basically that that will can invalidate the match pointer if the match no longer exists. Why do you even need references to the matches? Surely the server can just look up the match based on an ID or something in a map. And then if there's a player's in it, kill it. And if the player leaves, send a message to all the players. Yeah, that's exactly what it's supposed to do, Tim Scar. And that's exactly kind of what I'm making it do here. The the error is in the in the match pointers, basically in the match references. Uh, um, okay, so our match, we want to pass in. So we want to get our match the same way as we did before. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so we got this. Actually, we can make it a we can make it a match pointer, and then we say same thing with this. This is a const player index. So if match pointer, do I already think of the next game? It'll probably be Songbringer two. Okay, so if we have a match pointer, then we do a match pointer get client index. Otherwise, our player index is negative one. Okay, so here we pass in our match pointer, and the same we do the same thing here. So um, well, I mean we ch we're changing it up now, and so instead of um referencing our match reference that we had before we're using a match pointer which can be invalidated by erase client and now we can use that everywhere else that we were using actually we could just do an auto ref to the match now that we had know the match pointer is good okay so now we now we need to make this erase client function a little smarter we can make this a const match pointer ref oh it doesn't need to return a bool anymore oh that's not working uh no i had a yeah i had a 2013 mac book pro back when i was making songwriter but now i have a um i had the 2019 model so it's it's still um an intel based mac not the apple apple silicon i wish i had an m1 but i don't i got this right before they made the m1 so oh that's a match pointer ref that's right of course pointer ref match pointer doesn't return anything okay so in this when we're erasing the client um from when we join a match we don't care about this temporary match pointer so when we're erasing a client we can say const bool verbose equals bool match pointer to begin with and then if we don't have a match pointer then match pointer equals the address of match find and if we still don't have a match pointer then we need to log the fact that we don't and if we do then we can remove the client okay so here's the whole this is where the the key part of all this is where we need to invalidate the match pointer if we are erasing that exact match so we erase the match and we but before that we say if what's i i is matches oh i is a uh, vector vector iterators are pointers so if i equals match pointer then match pointer equals null pointer okay so that's really the key of all this right here is we're invalid we have to invalidate that match whenever we re erase a client oh you got the new mini m2 sweet that was look really good i would love to have one of those too um have you are you able to how is like the um how is it playing window can you play windows games i know you can you can use like parallels, but how good is it for playing Windows games? Oh my gosh, that should work because we erase the client. If we still have a match pointer, then we send. Okay, I'm going to do a little log statement to the server to make sure that we've, we just are really clear about what just happened. So after erasing connection percent x match is still active send s okay so this is con and this is our match pointer up here our match reference and then do match.desk.s and that's one two three one two three cool our printf statement matches up okay and then it's also also put a log statement if we don't if we are proceeding to with the, the remaining client things. So after erasing connection at Senex, match is no longer active. We'll give our match pointer here and we'll also give our player index because that's part of what is that uh, if statement above. So match is no longer active, match pointer and player index. Okay, let's get the server rebuilding. And oh, I know there's one thing I can check in. Uh, I'll just do that later. Okay, I got to review all this code and make sure we did this right. Dang, this was a it's kind of a complicated solution. <laughs> 
Uh, but I think this is the right way to do this. Just to summarize it in like one sentence, we had an issue where the server would send a leave reply to a player for the wrong match. So basically a client leaves, leaves the game, they quit the whole game really fast. The server recognizes they're gone, but it sends a leave, it sends a leave message to the wrong clients telling them, hey, I left the match and it messed everything up for some clients. So this is a really important thing to fix. So so basically what could have happened is you could have been playing Wraithbinder and all of a sudden your character would just disappear and because the server thought that you had left the match, even though you totally didn't. So this is going to be a really great thing to have fixed here. So server on disconnect, we first get a match pointer for the match that this connection is currently part of before we've erased it. Then we get the player index in that match. Then we then we call match erase client, which is which goes into let's go actually to that that met that method uh so that if it's passed a match pointer then it proceeds in one way if it doesn't pass a match pointer then it proceeds in a different way um if it if it doesn't have a match pointer then it searches for the current for that match based on the connection then it goes and says basically if it can't ever find a match pointer whatsoever it says it lets this it logs out to the server's log that it can't find that match to erase a connection with if it can find the match pointer then it removes the client and logs now it's going and it's searching through all the matches and it's seeing if um there are any matches which have are empty of clients and if it finds finds a client it finds a match that no longer has any clients it goes and erases the match from the list of matches but it also invalidates the match pointer and so now we go back to the on disconnect method Basically, now we know that our match pointer that we pass to this match erase client function will now be null if it's if that match no longer is, exists. So then we can check the match pointer later before we go and use it again to send ready messages or leave replies to the remaining players that are inside that match still. We also added a whole bunch more log statements to kind of like help debug this situation. We also call the same erase client method from when player actually starts a match and in that case it passes in a null pointer temporary match into a race client to indicate that it doesn't really care whether that that match is invalidated because it's just about to create a, a brand new match anyways wow that was that was a lot of code for what should seems like it should have been a simple thing I maybe i coded that in a complex way but i feel like this is the right way to do it anyways let's just let's test this out now okay so just to refresh my memory what i'm doing here is i'm creating a match player two co-op we're creating a co-op match with player two and then co-op match with player one player one leaves their co-op match creates a solo match and then starts that solo match and then player two quits the game from the lobby without leaving or anything so the server has to deal with the, that fact so <laughs> we'll see what happens here oh do we have the server even running oh my gosh i forgot to even run the server get that going yeah that didn't work okay start it again what this play they're both offline still what's happened here server didn't start what's up why didn't the server start now it seems to be running okay that was really weird it's where i pressed the start button there okay third time's a charm all right we're in business new game co-op for player two new game co-op for player one uh player one cancels creates a new solo match and then after a second player two just quits the game all right good this player did not just teleport out for some reason it's really great that's what we're trying to accomplish very good very good okay let's look at the log file to see what just happened there to make sure that we had the, the server did what we thought it was supposed to. Okay, so created that co-op match with player two. Just look at this couldn't find client to erase message. I thought I got rid of that. Um, and then we, player one created a co-op match. Now, yeah, here we go. We got a nice little statement that says one has left match ID to co-op. Wait, why did it send a join reply though? That doesn't make any sense. It's for some reason we can't find the client to erase. Oh, I think because it did a lobby reply on message lobby. Hmm. Okay. So at this point, like my eyes are spinning here, looking at all these log statements. Um, here's where we create that first match. Here's where we create the second. Match. This is where one is leaving their, their match. And so it says lobby is not ready. Sending a lobby reply. Then it says match now ID two with blah, blah, blah. Then it says has left match. Oh, because they haven't disconnected. They just left the match. Okay. What does it say match? now when we remove a client we leave the match okay so we've left the match okay that's fine this is all as it should be why does it say sent the join reply though 
Mm, I think we also might need to invalidate this match pointer. If the mat, if certainly don't want to send, uh, I think we want to do this. If, if the match, if the match no longer has any clients that we don't need to send a join reply to anyone saying that, Hey, this player has left the match. We just need to just remove, return from this function because this is only sending a reply to any current client so it's totally pointless okay i think that's the what that's the thing i've just been looking at this whole log going why is it sending a join reply right here that doesn't make any sense well okay that aside let's see if um let's see if the rest of this works so we created the solo match sent a join reply and then later player two starts logging out or quits the game basically and so it starts erasing them it says that the match is now id one co-op with no more players it says that one match has been erased and then it says after erasing connection 68 match is no longer active match pointer zero player index zero so then we erase one of one clients oh and this is later later we start erasing the other client because they also leave their solo match so the solo match is now empty and then one match one of one matches erased and then we're all good after erasing the connection the match is no longer active all right that all makes sense we're going to double check all this works in a second i'm going to take a quick break Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of a divide and conquer strategy to commit some of the code already. So I don't have to think about some of this so much anymore. So I'm using git commit dash p on server.cpp. And this allows me to go uh, basically change by change through this file and choose which of these things to commit. So I can kind of get things, all this other stuff kind of like divided out into what's committable. Okay, so it's got a few little things like this find by ID change. Okay, let's test out, I had an idea here. Maybe erase client instead of passing in a match pointer, ref, kind of confusing. It might be a little easier to, nah, then it would, we wouldn't have this verbose thing. Okay, let's review this one more time. And then we'll test out this new little bit of code about returning when we don't need to send a join reply. And I'm counting up all of my, all these printf like statements. I'm counting up the percent s's and other things to make sure they mass the same number of arguments that's one two three one two three this one's one two three one two three one two three two three one two three four one two three four one two three one two three four two three four here's one two one two one two one two okay there's one little thing i can connect commit here in server okay let's give this a shot we're we our local server running still we're gonna restart it and now we are gonna do the same thing that we've done this whole stream where we get the, this one situation where it would have caused an in which client received a leave message. And so we're going to cause that same thing to happen. We're going to see this time if the join reply looked good and if the server still has the good log. And then we're going to check this in and put it on the low the online server. Okay, so now we got a new game for two. That's co-op. Um, one does a new game co-op. One leaves their, co their game. One does a new solo game. And then two exits the game. Okay, good. So player one did not get teleported out. That's great. That confirms that this worked and we're closing it and we can look at our log to see what just happened. So oh, we still get this couldn't find client to erase message. That's bugging me. <laughs> I want to fix that. Uh, but let's sep separate all this out into, oh, wait, I thought we restarted the server. Hold on a second. Why did we get sent join reply? Oh, no, no, I did this wrong. Okay, this is... That Okay, that's fine. Then there's, oh no, send a join reply for solo, erasing clients, erasing clients. Okay, this is all fine. Yeah. So client two creates a co-op match. Client one creates a co-op match. Client one leaves their co-op match and it did not send a join reply. That's cool. We're going to get commit dash P that little part of it. That one, that two lines of code right there actually works. Okay, so all right. Um, the last thing that's kind of bugging me is that it keeps on saying couldn't find client to erase connection, blah, 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 when we don't care. It's supposed to not be verbose and right there. So, so we have a temporary match pointer that's null when we call erase client this first time. And it should say, yeah, so this should have been, this should have been null. Yeah, it would be nice to make it more ordered and easy to read, wouldn't it? Huh. I mean, I could put some blank lines in like I just did right here manually. That would really help actually. It gets weird. It gets a very fatiguing to the eye to look at a log statement that's just like all jammed together like this. Like what the heck is going on? Oh, oh, it's couldn't find client to erase, not couldn't find match to erase. <laughs> okay, so we can just do this where we go if verbose. Okay, I like that. That's cool. Uh, um, it'd be nice if there were 
a like if there were a simple log method you know what let's get this commit committed first though yeah i want to commit this first and then we'll do we'll do that okay so we're going to make the online server and we're going to set both these clients to no longer be local getting hard to type okay so we still got two clients but they're both not local so they're using the online server we're just going to test if this all works now online so we're going to do the exact same thing we don't need our local copy of Xcode anymore running and we can proceed now because it should be done. Okay, there's done. All right, let's do this. And then we can check the online server's log file. It shouldn't have those statements anymore. And then I really like your idea, Sushi Gamers. That's a great idea to add. Just make those log statements easier to read. That'll be so much easier on me as a developer to be like, see what the heck's going on in this log file. I got an idea how to do it too. We use some timing timestamps okay so two creates a new co-op match one creates a new co-op match one exits their co-op match and creates a solo match and then two leaves the game leaving the game and good this player did not get disconnected good stuff okay let's get the online servers log file okay so we're gonna put some statements here into the log to make this easier ah good we didn't now we didn't this is better. For now, we're just um, manually putting in these these spaces here. See, if I just do it, if I did a log, a timestamp, like if I, uh, would that work if there were a lot of players though? Yeah, I was thinking there there was a, there was, there is a way to do it where I can do a special log, a timestamp-y type thing. Like these timestamps are identical. These are all at 40, 43. These are all at 40, 47. These are 40, 51, et cetera. But check it out. These are the same timestamp, so that wouldn't work. Um, I mean, I could I could get a better resolution on the timer, but it wouldn't work if there were a lot of um, clients using the server at the same time. It would really start to get confusing um, because the lo the server wouldn't be able to distinguish just based on a timestamp which groups of messages were all together. I think it's better to go and put a manual like base into whenever. A certain thing is finished logging. So we're going to commit what we just uh, finished with the server. This is a great bug fix here. So let's just uh, review this, what we did. Um, okay, so yep, that's basically when it's erasing a mat. When it's erasing a player from all matches, it checks to see whether it actually erased the match before it tries to use that same match pointer. Again, could cause all kinds of bugs. Okay, solve. Well, how did I word this? Gosh, I think this solved two problems. Yeah, Sushi, that's another way to do it, right? Add like kind of like a number to each type of thing that you're you're logging. So solve one player disconnecting from server and another player gets kicked from their match. Even solo matches. What? That's not supposed to happen. That was a that was a really good thing to have solved. Man. Okay, I think this also solved this other bug. I just want to look through this log statements to, to see if I can kind of parse out what this old this old issue was. See if it was the same thing. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. Before we do the log statements, we're going to also kind of apply the same kind of players not ready. I'm trying to remember what this... Yeah, one player pressed the ready button and both clients started. Oh, man, this is really hard to parse as well. Okay, I really do want to do this thing with the server and make this all easier to parse. Okay, so let's start with the, these kinds of statements like guys connecting, this guy's logged in. Okay, so we're just adding a blank log statement to the end of the section of things that should be logged. So we create a match ID. Actually, basically this, this is like all, all the server's messages it needs to send and end all of its mess its message functions like this is a function with which responds to the message login and at the very end of this method we just add a blank log statement it's really kind of the same thing for all sir all the server's messages i'm going to use that pattern that's verbosity level two though okay on message log on message join oh on message join might return from its method though wait a second we could do this a lot a lot simpler in net whole server messages we this is where we get messages for the server and we call the callback we could just add a log statement right here log v net verbosity is already here so we could just call that verbosity level one put a blank log statement there so every time we call up every time we have any kind of server message it just automatically handles that for us see if that works oops okay so we should just have net be the only thing net there we go. Server. Okay, that's fine. This is make the online server. Okay. Um, let's run this and let's just do the same thing, same kind of test. And we can just hope that it does gives us a nice server log.
Two does a new co-op game. One does a new co-op game. Oh, thanks, Sushi. Man, I would really take you up on that um, sometime, but I would need a way to get you the whole game. And it's not quite ready for that yet. I would, what I prefer to do is send it, put it up on Steam, uh, but I can't enable the Steam play test yet. Um, so really good idea. But at, at some point that will actually happen where, where you will be able to test that with me right while we're on stream. That'll be cool. Okay, so one leaves there match oops does a new solo yeah this guy leaves his match or leaves the whole game this player is fine and then we get this log file why didn't that work just build net oh man what happened did i put this in the right place not m.con connection not found no callback callback for message type this whole server messages ah, i don't know what happened dang I, that should have been a ah, okay whatever ah, let's move back to the local server and start to debug this like what happened okay so on poll server mess no poll poll server messages yeah what all right that should be happening let's run this we got our two clients that should be running locally and this should Give us a breakpoint right when the server even starts receiving the first login. There we go. Okay. And we can step through our callbacks and it appears that it'd be logging this. What's happened? I totally whiffed on that one. Does it need this to be not empty? Oh, okay. I see what happened. Yes, it, de it did indeed need that string to not be empty in order to put anything into the log file. So I could actually um, do, I could solve this in two ways. I could put... Uh, um, I could just make it so the log file allows anything to be even an empty string. I like that better than trying to make, trying to, I don't want this to happen again later in the future. I'll be like, why didn't this work? And yeah. Okay. So let's make the server again. By the way, what time is it? I have a clock. Okay. Got at least 15 minutes left. Good to be solving these very important issues. The server is a key component to multiplayer. If it responds with the wrong message, it can cause weird things to happen for clients. So what was happening here was that a, one client was receiving a leave message that they shouldn't have gotten. And it caused the player to just suddenly teleport out of their game. It's like, what? Why did I just teleport out of my game? Wasn't supposed to happen. So to make sure this is all working nicely and it's logging out nicely to our log files so we can more easily solve issues like this in the future. All right. Good. Still fine with this player here. Now let's get that log. Oh my God, it didn't work. Ugh. Give me a break. Okay, we're trying this again with the local server. What the heck just happened? E e e uh, okay, we just restarted Xcode, restarted the server. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save net.cpp, server.cpp, and log. I'm rebuilding all of kit foo. Okay, now I'm running the server again, just in case some file didn't get compiled, because that should have worked. That was really, really weird that that didn't work. Okay, so we've got our log our break point in place we've got one client running locally we're going to start this client up trigger the break point in the server step into the log statement and make sure that it's outputting that blank line to the log stepping in stepping over formatted this string and it instantly returns from the function from when i format this string oh because format args doesn't like that okay that explains it format args says if not stir on fail code okay that makes sense. So we need to say basically if thurlan format, then call this string format args. We'll surround that with braces just in case. Now this should work. I'm still going to try it with the local server though, just in case it doesn't work. Okay, so we've got our local server. We're going to run two clients. Oh, hopefully we can recover from this. Nope, we can't. Okay, we got to start over. And the breakpoint's still active. Actually, are there any other breakpoints still active? No, let's get rid of that. Okay, good. Try again. One day in the future, I'd like to be a programmer that can just foresee all these little incidents that happen that waste time. All I've been trying to do is add a log statement to my to the log that's empty and didn't foresee all this these little issues it's taking way longer than it should. So I'd like to one day be a programmer that can not waste so much time. Okay, good. That all worked. Let's check our log file. All right, good. Look at that. We got some nice little empty log statements. So here's where a player connected and logged in. Here's where a match was created. Here's another match being created. Here's a match being erased. Oh, I see. This is where they're creating a new match, but it erased the client from an existing match. Okay. Oh, server on disconnect also needs its own manual. Use of undeclared identifier Sterlin? Come on. Okay, so Linux requires C string. I wonder what it was in Mac that allowed that to pile successfully. 
Okay, while that's all compiling, we can com we can commit um, all this stuff. So the log file now allows sending an empty format into logger log, and we use that when we're pulling server messages and also on servers on disconnect. So this is add a blank line between group of law lo server log state. Man. Okay, and it successfully rebuilt the server. That's good. Okay, now, uh, okay, we got a few minutes left on today's stream, and I'd like to try and understand this other related issue with the server. So this has to do with the server and putting players in the right match and sending ready replies. What happened was I had two players and they both joined the same match. And what's supposed to happen is both players have to press the ready button in order for the match to start. For some reason, one player clicked ready and the match started. So something was wrong with that. I think it might be related to all the stuff I just fixed, but I'm not quite, I'm not gonna make that assumption. So what I'd like to do is before this stream is up, I'd like to at least try and understand, just grok this, these log statements right here and try and understand what actually was happening and see if what I did today would fix that or maybe i need to do so look at this and try and uh, find a better find a solution that's going to work so so at first players i had two players in a match and they had started they were both on the ship and they were stuck like it was just causing pause 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 their their clients were pausing over and over and over so neither person could play one of the players quit the game one of the players i don't know what happened um it was a remote player on their end i think they stayed inside the game so let's try and understand that first part did the first players stay in the game or not okay so i think this is the be nice to know which players which like maybe i can ch change all these all these little connection ids to something more specific okay I I think to the best of my knowledge, this player six nine whatever was me. And then I reconnected. So this player nine B also me. Okay, so that means all these other players, player five hundred basically, is my friend. Okay, so we're gonna call this friend. Okay, that should help a lot. All right, so we were playing a match. Both of us were kept on pausing. And then I left, I, I completely quit the game. So I left the match. It The server updated the match. That's weird. I wonder why the server updated the match because okay, later later the, it works. Friend is ready, match now ID two, co-op, seed mode, world dungeon with just my friend. And it doesn't send a ready reply because it already did. Yeah, friend was already ready. Hmm. Sending leave reply for Nat to one client. Hopefully that was the right client. Later I reconnect. That's me again, Nat. Um, uh, I create a co-op match. It's a new ID. So this is a different ID for match ID to... Oh, I'm going to put a note right here. Okay. So I create a new co-op co match. Oh, eventually the server converts that old match. No. Okay, this is when this is when my friend somehow left his converted his match into a solo match and then erased it and then it adds my friend to my co-op match ID one. Okay, so here's we have two problems. Well, no, one problem in general. It's this match that I created here. I create match. Here we go. I create match ID one, and then later my friend joins the match ID one, and then as soon as I press the ready button, it sends a reply to both players saying this match is ready. Let's start things. Um, that's not right. It should have waited for my friend to join. So somehow this match that I created had the ready bits for both players. Hold on a second. I'm starting to starting to dawn on me what might have happened on lobby message. It goes and sets the client to be ready. Oh, I get it. I totally get it now. OK, this is not related to the old issue. And I think I know how to duplicate all this. Basically, a client structure on the server. This is the server's code we're looking at. This client structure has all sorts of information about the client. One of them is the bits for any kind of flags that a client might have. And a client's bits could be lobby ready or ready. Um, what happened was this, so my friend was still playing, right? They were still on the server. So the, the server, when they, the server first creates a lobby, um, and the player, the, the client structure gets the lobby ready bit. And then my friend went into this match, started playing. 
and had the the ready message as well in their bits. But then they were somehow able to get kicked out of their game, but still say stay on the server. So they still had this lobby ready bit. That's the whole problem here. So all we need to do is make sure that when whenever a client gets added to a match or creates a match, we need to make sure that client know, has all of their, their lobby ready bits and their ready bits cleared. Okay, so client. Okay, I need to also check when. In, this is where it adds a client, but it also can just init a match. This is all in match create. So is this the only place that calls add client from match create? It looks like it. Okay, this is not the right place to put this. We need to put this somewhere better. So we got this match create function, which really is only, there's only one place where this gets called server on message join in the server. So we've already got a client structure right here. Yeah, we just need to do it right here. So whenever, whenever a player joins a match, we need to clear these flags. This is essential. Okay. So now let's, what, what let's try and do now is duplicate the, the bug um, and confirm that what that did right there fixes this. So we're going to go back to local server mode, run the local server as well. Okay. We need to make sure that the server, okay. Yeah. does not have that fix yet. Okay. So I need to, I need to duplicate this situation. So we, we launch with two players. They both join a match together. One player quits completely. The other player quits back to the main menu, but stays on the server. And then both players try and join a match together. All right. So we're going to make player two, create a co-op public match. Player one, joins that match. Okay, so that worked correctly. Both players had to choose the ready button. So I'm, what I'm confirming here is that we still have this, that I can duplicate this bug. So player two is going to quit completely. And this um, this is okay for this, this player. This player now is part of their own match, but what we want to do is keep them on the server, but quit the match. So we're quitting this match. This is kind of weird. I'm not sure what's happening here for this client, but I think it'll I think it'll figure things out in a second. Um, so let's get two clients going again. We need we need to get one more client. Basically, we can close one of them, keep one of them running. Okay, so this is the client we want to keep. We want to close this client, and this is also an issue. I don't know why this player is hung for a bit, but I think it's going to figure things out here in like less than a minute. It's got some timeouts to how it creates the world. Come on. Hmm. What's going on? Uh, maybe not. Maybe this player is not able to recover. Okay. Uh, uh, hmm. Well, I could try and solve whatever problem this is so that I can see if this other problem gets solved. Okay. That's the only way I can see to solve this right here. All right. What happened here? Okay. Let's try that again from the scratch. I accidentally overwrote that other player's log files. It wasn't good. Mm, four. Okay, I quit this. This player should be able to just save and quit. That's weird though. Both client, both players were all of a sudden teleported out. Okay, here's where it gets really weird though. This player just there and hangs. We need to know what the heck's going on here. Let's take a look at its log. Oh, it thinks it's waiting in a lobby. Oh, like that kind of makes sense. Okay, I don't think I re I reset the the lobby ready variable because waiting in lobby. Yeah. Either that or it has some menu in it, but it didn't have a menu, so it must be the lobby ready. So lobby ready needs to get reset when we when we we're actually playing. So I think every time we create a world, we need to reset lobby ready. So create world mission. Is that right? Yeah. So when the game gets started, they're going to create world void and it's okay to reset the lobby because the player won't even be in a lobby yet. And then the player will still be within the world void. They'll join a match. Their lobby ready variable will, will be active and able to be checked. And then they'll close out that world void and they'll create a brand new world for the ship. And at that point, it will set lobby ready to false again. Let me just double check all the other places that lobby ready might be used. So in send lobby ready, that only happens from the main menu. Zeeth, what's up, Zeeth? Oh man, it's been a long time since I've seen your handle, man. How you been? Yeah, this is online co-op for Wraithbinder. So we got his lobby ready uses it there. This is on message join reply. Sets so lobby ready to false. That makes sense. I think that'll do it. Let's see if this works. Yeah, yeah. It's been going really good. Um, this beta test uh for Wraithbinder coming up July 14th is uh I'm almost got the multiplayer ready to work for that. So this is um the last beta was already really awesome for single player. 
People were stoked. Um, the graphics got a lot better this January through March. And so a lot more people got excited about it on Twitter. Things were kind of blowing up on Twitter for there for a little bit. That was really cool. And right during that, right during the last beta, everything was really rad. Lots of players gave great feedback on the single player. And now for, for the last like three months, I've been working on multiplayer and um, really could use, yeah, dude, I definitely could use your help and your feedback, man, on uh, trying out this uh, this multiplayer. So yeah, lots, this is a really huge technical challenge, um, in video game development, as you probably know, um, multiplayer is no easy thing. I mean, if you think like any kind of video game development is hard and it already is like, there's so many things that are part of making a video game that are very difficult, but multiplayer is like, times 10 you know it's like oh my god it's so tedious so so crazy because you're dealing with packets of information that can come in and out of order and servers and clients and peer-to-peer -peer and like it's like yeah anyways um i'm really excited to have this all done <laughs> actually and um uh yeah so um how hard was it to add i yes this was designed from the beginning wraith finder was designed from the beginning to be a multiplayer game so i had it in mind the whole time um and uh it still was difficult to add and this is actually the second time i've written an online multiplayer game so i already know what i'm doing here but it's still just a very time consuming and difficult process uh one thing i did for this I was I created this whole object called a state, which can um, hash out the entire game state. It can serialize the game state. It can record game states and then compare things. So when I'm running two clients here on the screen, I'm often recording all of their game state to see where a possible desynchronization can happen between two clients, which is critical in getting all these all these desync solved so that the game runs smoothly online and the players see the same thing on each screen. So if there's a desync, basically uh, uh, one player can be in a totally different part of their screen than the other player thinks they are and your players are totally out of sync and that's just you're like one person's playing a game and the other person's playing a totally different game even though you're in the same multiplayer match so yes um actually so there's two things that are saved with the game state um one is this giant log file Let's see if we get there you go yeah so there's two things one is this giant log file which has all of that game state and then there's also this tiny little log file, which has, um, or it's a tiny little text file with just the inputs that were used to generate that. So yes, we can do replays. So that's kind of a really cool thing about getting all this multiplayer working. The bonus is that I'll have, I'll be able to do replays of matches, the entire thing, and in a very, very small amount of data. So check it out. Like here's the little, here's the little scene file dot text for, whoops, for one of the last things I recorded. Oh, this doesn't have any input. Anyways, there's usually a bunch of input in these files. Uh, well, maybe this this other one does it. Build client to scene zero dot text. Oh, here's some. Okay, so this is what it usually looks like, right? This is saying that at tick 253 for player zero, um, input index zero, press button A. There's no vector input. This is input type keyboard. And here's the entire game hash of the whole state of my my player right now. So it can record these and, you know, play these things back eventually. Yeah, right. It would be so helpful to have these for like if a game crashes and you can figure, figure out why by just playing back a replay. Um, yeah, lots and lots of cool stuff can happen just because this multiplayer is all real tight code and stuff like that so what i'm dealing with what i'm just about solved here is another issue with the server so um the online server is used to match up different peers but once they're once these peers are matched up they can play co-op together entirely peer-to-peer -peer. so they're just sending messages to each other only and not to the server but the server is still pretty critical so there's an issue where I would have two players part of a match. So let's get that all started. Um, and then one player would totally quit their game and the other player would quit to the main menu. And then when they tried to create a new match together, um, one player would press ready and the other player would automatically join. 
So that was a, that, the problem was that it, it's supposed to wait for both players to be ready. So I think I've got this solved, but right now I'm trying to confirm the issue. So that player quits, this player quits to the main menu. And what we should have is this player should go back to the main menu. Hopefully that works now. Come on. Oh no, it might not have worked. So I'm trying to solve this one problem, but I have another problem <laughs> that, that, that cropped up in the meantime, as usual. Uh, what happened here? Oh, wait, no. Uh, here's where it unpaused. Here's where, okay, there's where the player left the match. It unpaused. Oh, it finally worked. Okay, good. Please don't say, oh, it crashed. Oh, no, why did it crash? Oh. Why is it waiting forever? Oh, because we've got debug thing for clients, maybe. Oh, this is, oh, oh it was trying to, yeah. It was definitely trying to reconnect to the, the other player. Wait a second. This is back at the main menu and it's basically just filling up its entire logs, entire network inputs. Okay. we now have a third problem. Okay. Let's try and deal with this third problem so we can get back to that first problem. Well, what time is it though? We're like, well, well over the time for this, sir, this stream. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I have to get going 545 already and I was supposed to finish at five. Okay. Anyways, let's get, let's like recap though. What was done on today's stream. Yeah. So on today's stream was the, today's stream was all about solving couple issues on the server and one of them before was an issue where we would start a game, co-op game for one player. Another player would start their own co-op game. And then the other player would quit their co-op game and create a new solo game. And then the first player would quit their lobby for their co-op game and the the bug would that would happen was that this player over here that's still running would suddenly be teleported out of their game as if they had left their match. And that was a bug on the server where things were getting all confused with what match was what. And so it thought that it should send a leave reply to this player. So as you can see, this player is not teleported magically out of their game. So that that bug is solved. That was a really big, important thing um, that could have caused all kinds of problems with players with the beta in the next from in our beta coming up on July 14th. So that's really great that that's solved. Um, but now we have another issue where, um, uh, we're, let's get two clients going and I'll explain this other issue. Um, this one is where two players are playing a match together. So they're inside a match. They're already playing. They're on the, either they're on the ship or they're, um, on a certain level. And then um, one player will completely quit the game and another player will just quit back to the main menu. And what happened was the server didn't clear a couple bits for a client. So they thought that they're they're They were already ready to be in a lobby. So when these two clients would go back and start a new match and start together, since one player was still connected to the server, um, they the server thought they were already ready. And as soon as player one pressed the ready button, both clients would start the match. And that was also a problem. It's it's like less of a problem than uh, that other problem, but still it's a problem, right? You want to, the server needs to wait for both players to press the ready button to for, to start the match. So that's what that bug was. Um, but other than that, things are going really pretty good. Like there's a lot of desyncs that have been solved in the last, I mean, just there's dozens and dozens of tiny little issues that have been solved lately to get these players to stay pretty much in sync. Um, there's still some issues to be to be solved and uh hopefully i can get all those wrapped up or or at least come up with some miracles before the july 14th beta uh zeef is one of the players acting as the server or host no both players are just clients there's there still remain their connection to the server so if they need to do any kind of arbitration or whatever you know like if one put one player disagrees about input they can just reference the server, but it's the, I've designed this game um, where you don't actually, th that doesn't actually need to happen. So neither client is the host, um, which basically just means that every player is entirely responsible for their own input. So that's all that's really happening um, is that all the only, the only thing that peers are exchanging between each other is input data. Like when I press the right button on my keyboard here, 
or I press the left button or when, and when I let go, that sends a packet of information, you know, also they're sending a, a packet of information every single tick, even if there's no input. So it's like a little heartbeat that's going on between these two clients. So, and right now what happens is when, when the, when a player doesn't receive input for a current tick, the game will pause for both clients and it'll wait for their, 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 uh, input to get synced up and then it will unpause. So you're seeing right now that neither of these players are pausing or unpausing because they're staying perfectly in sync within their fixed input delay and there's no need for the game to pause. But that's kind of why you don't need a host. You don't need one of the players to be a host or a server because the game pauses if there's ever a discrepancy. It just pauses and waits for players to catch up and reconnect and resync up and boom go ahead so yeah yeah totally i'm happy to share more about that later um okay so that's all for today's stream i'm really looking forward to this july 14th through the 25th this next beta with online co-op in the game wraith binder and uh, i'm really excited to be playing this with other people and for other people to play and hopefully you know have some fun matches with other people finally also this game is still totally single player as well if you don't want to play this game online co-op it's, you don't have to, it's totally single player. You can play offline and still maximize your character and do everything you want. It's just that now you can also play this sort of roguelite game with Metroidvania elements with other players, with online co-op. And eventually there's plans to add a PVP mode too. So thanks a lot for watching this stream, people. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having you guys test. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. I really appreciate um all your help with testing this game. So later on, I'll be back next Wednesday with another live stream. This the next one will be the, the stream right before the beta. Whoa. All right, everybody. Later. Good chatting with you.